Welcome to the, my first video of the Scots Hobbies YouTube channel and we're going to make a knife out of this industrial hacksaw blade well remnant of it. A friend of mine used to use this at his job they made all kinds of like hoses and pipes and sometimes they had to cut open the as it was coming out of the machine the uh, what would you call it like the insulation on high pressure pipes and or whatever they were and just to see if the thickness was the same so they banged up this crude thing and that's the design I'm going to make um, out of well an old hacksaw blade and yeah just to slice it open and see the thickness of the insulation which I think that was some of the degraded insulation on the inside it was kind of nasty and falling apart and sticky <laughs> um, yeah so it was a bit of a pain pulling that apart but got there in the end double sided tape on the inside that nasty stuff and then some cloth tape over the top pretty crude but effective from what I hear this is from over 20 years ago too so it's pretty old as you can see the sand is running away from me there so I clamped it down there and it took a while to actually sand the, all the pitting out of that, probably about six minutes or so per side, and I'm constantly dunking it in water to try and keep it cool because I want to keep the heat treat as it is. Um, that's 40 grit there, 40 grit finish. Um, and you can kind of make out it says high speed and made in EN, and before I ground it flat, I could see a G. So I'm guessing made in England, and I doubt they make it there anymore, but that was from over 20 years ago. So, yeah, and here I'm making a template, and this was really hard to saw around the camera. So <laughs> I'm going to have to work out a better way to do that, because that was a pain. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so the template is just so that I can... Um, what do you call it? If, if I like the design, I can make another one and it gives me a good solid, um, I guess, a good solid thing to scribe around as opposed to just trying to scribe around a paper design. And yeah, I always have fun doing this because the plywood just sands away so fast with the 40 grit belt there. Okay, that's done. So now I'm scrubbing around the um, design, and unfortunately, the holes were kind of in the wrong spot. As you can see, the scrub line goes through one of the holes, so I had to make an adjustment for that later. But we got there in the end, and this is not the best way to clamp down a piece if you're using an angle grinder. It kept moving on me, but I fixed that up shortly. And there's me trying to keep it cool because I want to keep the heat treat it has um, now changed to the grinding disc and I'm about to change to a better clamping system. <laughs> there we go. Now, yeah, it ground fairly easily but because it was so thin, but it's actually really, really hard to grind. Like you can't even file this and I tried drilling it with a normal drill bit won't drill but as you can see here have a look at those sparks they were actually a lot duller than than on the video here it was really dull orange and they don't pop at all like a normal high carbon steel does I don't know if that's because it's a high speed steel or what maybe someone knows and can comment below but yeah, I had to make sure not to grind down to my scribe line, otherwise that hole would be poking through. So I'll fix that up later on the belt sander. But did change the design a bit, but it still came out fairly comfy, so I'm very happy with that. And here, I'm just cleaning up the profile here after, because the angle grinder leaves it pretty rough, and I'm pretty new with an angle grinder, so I don't like to 
go too close to my scrub lines. Um, this was insanely hard on the belts, this steel. Um, I haven't ground much, but compared to like an annealed tool steel or like 10, 1075 or something, this is just, yeah, pretty rough. <laughs> This is just a standard 4x36, they call it, in America, or 100x915 um, in metric land. And that top wheel worked really well for this design. I didn't design it around that, but, you know, it just happened to work out. And I got a little 1x30 here I got off eBay just for cleaning up. Well, there's me putting, that green flash was me putting on my ear muffs because it was... Uh, ear protection because it was a bit louder than I thought. <laughs> but yeah, this thing works alright. Um, I might do a review on it in another video. But it works really well because you can get close and, um, you know, doesn't have housing in the way, so it helps a lot with that. Um, getting the burr off this was nasty. It took you know, a few minutes really, I only shot a few seconds there, but just trying to get the burrs off, it was you know, nasty steel. <laughs> so yeah, here I'm just trying to drill the holes, I've got a special drill bit here that's meant to drill through hardened steel. Took a while to get where it is there, and that was a lot of fun. <laughs> I was like, ooh, that's cool. I'm guessing what happened is it superheated the wood underneath, and then once it you know, it was starved of oxygen once it got the oxygen, that's where the flash came from. And my drill bit broke there, so I had to file out the hole, which, considering it is extremely hard to file, that took about 10 minutes of mucking around there. Um, now I've just got some Jarrah here, which is a hardwood. Um, a lot of people use it for flooring or decking. Um, it's quite nice, in my opinion. So I decided to use some of it for this. These are some scales I made up. I'll do a video later showing how I do that or show it in a video. But this was getting too long as it was. So yeah, just drawing around it. Cut off as much as I can or a fair bit so that I can save on some abrasives because this project has been quite hard on the belts already. So. And it creates less dust too. I'm quite impressed with this um, new belt sander I've got. I haven't used tools much, but um, yeah, this thing is way faster than filing or rasping. And it's got a half horsepower motor, which I have bogged down a couple times, but I have to press fairly hard to do it. And there I'm just finishing off the fronts a while. Shaping the fronts and shaping, I decided to put a, I guess a taper at the front there on the disc sander. And yeah, the hand sanding I took up to 600 grit. I was going to go 400, but then I was like, yeah, I want more. And um, yeah, then I forgot to finish sanding the front, so I'm back doing that again. <laughs> I took the handle up to 400 grit all over, I thought. Oh, and time for some hardcore batoning, which is mandatory in knife making videos apparently. Or anything knife related. Um, I do not recommend using 5 minute epoxy unless you've done this enough times that you know what you're doing because this was a pain in the butt, especially if you're going to paint the pins like I decided to. Um, this stuff just Q was too quick and I just ended up with a big mess. I ended up, <laughs> it was a bit, and there's me putting it on backwards, not paying attention. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, the, um, kind of nasty got everywhere. I was trying to rush and you're better off just using a, yeah, like one that takes like an hour to cure or one with a long working time anyway, like half hour at least, especially if you knew at this like I am. And I decided to try a lanyard hole in this one because the um, 
well, I, I made use of that hole that was in the end already, so I didn't have to drill another one. And it was a bit over 7mm, and it's a 7mm brass tube, so it didn't fit quite snugly, but it, it was pretty good. Um, it The wood I obviously drilled at 7mm, so that was um, snug enough, and the epoxy will hold it in. It only weighs like a gram or two, so it's going to hold it no problem. The painting took a while, and I need to work out a better way to cut that off because that was too thin for the hacksaw. Um, yeah, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess. I had to put some extra glue in because it kind of I didn't get to clamp it in time, so I just put glue in to fill up the gap around the end there near the near the uh, lanyard hole. And yeah, so now I'm just trying to neaten it all up and I didn't clamp it down so it's rubbing away on me again, the sander I mean. And yeah, at this point I was thinking, oh, this is coming out pretty good, so happy with it so far. And this is a little thingamajig I made, I can just put sandpaper on it and put it in the drill. I've got 220 grit on there. And... Um, no, sorry, 240. And, yeah, that helps to get the, um, you know, all the grind lines straight on the tang. The shaping I did here with some 120 grit. Um, round it off, make it nice and comfy. As you can see, the, the painting, it's a lot wider since that was 4 mil rod that I used, brass rod, so it's got a nice good mechanical lock on there. And then I've changed to a 400 grit bit of sandpaper there to go around, um, get all the grind lines nice and straight, and just trying to neaten it up a bit with um, a bit wrapped around a little file. Uh, the tube was a bit sharp on the inside, and I thought that might wreck any lanyard you put in there, so I, um, yeah, what would you call it? I guess chamfered it a bit to take that away. I did the whole bevel on the Edge Pro Apex, and it probably took about an hour, so an hour, hour and a half for a 12, 13 degree Scandi on this. That's about one mil thick. Finished up on the, um things there, the Edge Pro stones, uh, not Edge Pro, sorry, Easy Lap, and there's the cat coming out of the bloody, under the couch, I didn't even know it could fit under there, <laughs> and um, I saw her walk past, but I didn't know she was there, you can probably hear it's a little scratchy scratchy, it still had a bit of a burr on there, the bare leather on its own wasn't enough to, um, get the burr off, but I couldn't be bothered finding my um, strop that I have compound on there. So normally it works on most knives, but this being a high speed steel, the burr is quite nasty, so it needs to be abraded off while stropping, not just folded off like a lot of other steels you can do. Uh, I have no idea why there was a black and white part there. Um, anyway. Yeah, so I've put a mixture of boiled linseed oil and terps. That just helps it carry further into the wood. Um, on the handle. And as you can see, well, in my opinion, it's looking pretty good. I'm carving a notch here. This bit of wood was harder than I thought when I grabbed it, so um took a bit longer than I thought. Um, the spine was a bit sharp, but that's because it was only um, about a millimetre thick, all the steel. But still worked as a, a good little knife. Um, making a just a little pot hanger type notch here. And um, yeah, I, I was quite surprised with how it did. And I cut the burr off after this because it was folded over with a um, ceramic rod and it came out way sharper. Um, so that's how the notch works. And it doesn't strike quite the best on a ferro rod, as you'll see. But that's because the um, spine's not completely square, but because it's so thin, it's kind of sharp on your fingers. So a 2mm or so plus would be a bit better as a blade thickness, but 
I wanted to get all the pitting out. And so yeah, thanks for watching the, the video and um, I hope to come out with a new one every couple weeks or so till I get used to it. Um, thanks. Bye.